Syria's military is preparing for what could be the last, bloodiest battle of its long war. This is a training exercise outside of Damascus, designed to intimidate the last remaining militant groups who refuse to surrender to Bashar al-Assad's regime. We were brought here by Russia's military as part of a sweeping tour aimed at demonstrating Russia's influence in Syria. Syrians were keen to show us they've beefed up the capabilities of their army. This is a special operations drill from a newly formed unit. Supposedly here they're training to take out terrorists. Terrorists specifically in Idlib province near Turkey. There are between 20 and 30,000 jihadi militants in Idlib, but also more than half a million civilians. Assad wants Idlib back. We all jammed into a Russian armored personnel carrier and headed into the region. Human rights groups claim indiscriminate Russian bombing has already killed more than 6,000 civilians and targeted infrastructure such as hospitals. If Syria and Russia launch a full offensive and the militants hide behind human shields, the casualties could be enormous. One of the places we stopped was Khan Sheikhoun, once a town of 30,000 people that Assad's army recaptured a few weeks ago. We saw people getting bags of food from the Russian army. 54-year-old Walid Sani told us life under the terrorists was awful. Still, it seems most people in Khan Sheikhoun chose to flee north in the other direction to take their chances with the jihadi opposition rather than live under Assad's rule. This town is strategically important for all of the combatants in this region, which may explain why in 2017 it was the target of a chemical gas attack. The evidence was overwhelming that Assad's forces were responsible. 90 people were killed and hundreds injured by what was likely sarin gas. Doctors who treated patients with burns posted videos, as did aid workers such as the Western back group, the White Helmets. And yet, incredibly, Russia and Syria claimed the attack was a fabrication. They even attempted to show us how the opposition might have faked it. They took journalists to a remarkable tunnel complex, holed out under the earth were 150 meters of passages, some barely large enough to squeeze through, leading to rooms that were even wired with electricity. They told us the jihadi militants used this place as a living quarters and a command center to launch attacks. The fake chemical weapons attack was filmed here, said the Syrian officer, but his only flimsy proof was this vest belonging to the white helmets, left near the cave entrance for us to see. The conclusion is that Russia continues to provide cover to Assad for atrocities and that the opposition in Idlib is well dug in. Talking to regular Syrians was difficult. One of the few opportunities was in the historic battered city of Aleppo. We were here two years ago following a Russian and Syrian bombing campaign that left several thousand civilians dead and the eastern part of the city in ruins. It's clear now some rebuilding has happened. We visited a steel mill that's back in business and heard from predictably grateful workers such as Khalid. We love Assad. This is our president. We trust him. That's all we know. Things are also looking better at the beautiful ancient market, a UNESCO heritage site that's been reopened even as restoration work continues. We met soap seller Abdul Rahman Mahoud Dali. Shoppers will come here like they did before, he says, but we have to wait a bit longer before the market is fully rebuilt. From high up on the balcony, in one of Aleppo's few Western quality hotels, you'd almost think things were back to normal. But the country's poverty rate is 90%, and the war has destroyed the economy. As long as Assad remains in charge, his friends and family will take big cuts of any investments or new projects in Syria, and that's toxic to Western involvement in reconstruction.
We attempted to put some of the tough questions about the awful human cost of Russia's war in Syria to the general leading our group, Igor Konashenkov. Russia's investments in Syria have in fact been fairly modest. 5,000 troops on the ground, minimal losses to equipment and about 120 military personnel killed. And for that, Russia is now permanently entrenched with new bases in the Mediterranean, it's gained diplomatic influence in the Middle East and will have a huge say about what happens next in Syria. Chris Brown, CBC News in Syria's Idlib province.